Welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes and the May 2016 paper has been completed. Um, I'd just like to thank Keisha for providing me with uh, a copy of the examination paper. Um, this is the first video on the solutions to the May 2016 paper that was um, just held on Wednesday. Okay, um, I'm working on question two. So question two stated that we have to factorize completely. Now, if we look at this first one here, four a squared minus 16, right? Um, we can easily pull out four. And this will become a squared minus four. But the thing is, we can factorize this even further because a squared minus four is a difference of two squares. So this could be, or this will be, a squared minus two squared, because two squared will give me four, right? And in the case of a difference of two squares, we can write this as a plus two by a minus two. Okay, so this is how you factorize 4a squared minus 16. You all need to recall that a squared minus b squared is a difference of two squares. And this can be written as a plus b into a minus b. Right, so this is what I use here with the a squared minus 2 squared. Now the second part, 3y squared plus 2y minus 8, this is a quadratic expression. Um, when we have to factorize a quadratic, um, if you look at um, one of my videos, you will see how I do this. So the first thing we need to do, we need to find two numbers whose sum is equal to the middle term, or the term in y, so the sum has to be plus 2. And the product of those two numbers we are looking for has to be 3 multiplied by minus 8, which is minus 24. Right? Now, so the two numbers that we are looking for here will be um, 6 and minus 4 and let's do a quick check 6 plus minus 4 will give me plus 2 and 6 multiplied by minus 4 will give me 24 minus 24 sorry right so your next step is to replace the middle term so you're going to put 3y squared plus 6y minus 4y minus 8 right so i got the 6y and the minus 4y by using these two numbers here then we're going to factorize by grouping. So we can pull out, let's see, we can pull out 3y. So we'll end up with y plus 2. And then we're going to have minus, we can pull out the 4. And we'll end up with y plus 2. All right? And this will be 3y minus 4 into y plus 2. Okay. Um, whenever you're factorizing by grouping, just remember that um, in your terms, you should get things that are similar in the brackets. So I have y plus 2 here, and I have y plus 2 here. All right. Um, what you will get confused with is if to put a minus sign or plus sign here, but you can easily check it because minus four by y will give me minus four y, right? That's what you have here. And then minus four by plus two will give me minus eight, all right? Over time, when you start factorizing more and more quadratic expressions, you can easily look at the expression and will, you will be able to factorize it, okay? Because typically, I don't use the sum and product unless it's a difficult quadratic to factorize. 
Okay. Now let's look at the part B. Now part B is a simultaneous linear equation. So we have two equations here. So let me do this by, I can do this by, let's say, let's do it by elimination. Okay, so I have one equation one here and equation two. It's the first thing you need to do. Now, with elimination, you need to make sure that the x's or the y's in both equations are the same. So right now they are not. So if I take equation one and I multiply that entire equation by two, I will end up with four x plus two y is equal to six. All right, let's call that equation three now. And let me just write back what equation two is, which is five x minus two y is equal to 12. All right, so that's my equation two. Now we can get rid of the two y in both equations by adding the two equations. So we're gonna add equation three plus equation two so 5 plus 4x, 5, 4x plus 5x will give me 9x. And 2y plus minus 2y will give me 0, right? And 6 plus 12 will give me 18, right? So therefore, x is equal to 18 over 9. So therefore, x is equal to 2. So we're gonna take that value of two and substitute it into any one of our equations. So let's say substituting um, x equal to two into equation one, we will end up with two by two plus y is equal to three. So four plus y is equal to three. So y is equal to three minus four. So therefore y is equal to minus one. All right, now I've done videos on simultaneous equations, um, doing, um, doing them both ways, either by elimination or by substitution. I suggest that you review that video. And like I said in the video, once you have a simultaneous equation, you can always check to see if your answer is correct. So we know x is two and y is minus one. If I plug that into my first equation, let's see if it's correct. So two multiplied by two plus minus one is equal to, two to the four minus one will give me three. So therefore my x and y satisfies the first equation. So that is correct. Let's try it in the second equation. Now remember, it must satisfy both. Eh? We have some students who will get an answer that su that will satisfy one and not the other. Um, so five by two minus um, two by y, which is minus one. So this will be five twos are 10, and minus two by minus one will give me plus two. So this will be 12, right? So therefore it satisfies the second equation. So the solution is correct. X is equal to two and Y is equal to minus one. Now the last part of this question has to do with variation. Now I did not get a chance to do a video before the exam. So we have a table below here showing variables X and Y and Y varies directly as X. This is the important part of this question here. Y varies directly as X. What does that mean? So y varies directly as x. We say mm -hmm. y is proportional to x, right? When you say y varies directly at x, as x, this is what we are saying. Y is directly proportional to x. Look, this sign here is a proportional sign. Right? So, we don't have an equation as yet, so we have to put, to replace the proportional sign, we will do this. Replace it with an equal sign, but we're gonna have to put a key, or what we call a constant, before the x, right? So whenever you get 
a question like this y varies directly as x it's going to be written as y is proportional to x therefore y is equal to kx your objective is to find k initially before you can do anything else and they told us in the table that when x is equal to 6 y is equal to 3 so we're going to substitute that in our equation so y is 3 and x is equal to 6 so therefore k is equal to 3 over 6 so therefore k is equal to a half right so that's the first step in a question like this so therefore we can say that y is equal to half x right or we can say that y is equal to x over 2 whichever one you are comfortable with all right now we have to find u but we know that x is equal to 10 when y is equal to u so what you're going to do you're going to start off with your equation y is equal to x over 2 y is u so you're going to put u is equal to x which is 10 over 2 so therefore u is equal to 5 right so this is one part then we have another piece of information here we say x is t but y is 9 so we write our equation again y is equal to x over 2 what is y y is 9 what is x x is t right so sorry this will be 9 is equal to t over 2 right 9 can be written as 9 over 1 and all we do is simply cross multiply here so 1 by t will give me t and 9 by 2 will give me 18 right so t is equal to 18 so I will do a video on this to show you because the statement can be written different ways we can say that y varies directly as x squared in which case it'll be y is proportional to x squared or we can say y varies inversely to x which can, which is written as y is proportional to 1 over x so that there, there are different ways they can ask this question right this one was pretty straightforward it was a direct relationship between x and y okay